And welcome once again to Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. Joining me as always, Juan Zarati. He's our national security analyst. Juan, good to see you as Bob, always. Great to see you. Let's talk about uh, Ukraine. It seemed like this had reached a crisis point uh, about a week or so ago, and now we were kind of like treading water. Where are we here? Well, there's an attempt to bring uh, this to conclusion through diplomatic means. And by conclusion, I mean uh, no longer an escalation of the tension. You had the real threat that the Russian troops on the eastern border of the Ukraine would take steps in uh, and would begin to try to occupy more territory. Um, what you have now is a diplomatic uh, attempt, at least to lessen tensions, uh, to try to deter the Russians from doing anything uh, further, and to try to find a way out of the Crimean conundrum, which is, what do you do about the annexation of Crimea by Russia, and what is the future of the government in Kiev and the Ukraine? Uh, that's where you've had the discussions now between Secretary Kerry and Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, and the calls, of course, between Presidents uh, Putin and Obama. And so we're, we appear to be in a moment of less tension, uh, but the question of Russian intention is still there, and the question of the stability of the government in Kiev is still with us. Some things seem to be kind of unchangeable at this point. Uh, the Crimean Peninsula is gone. Russia has taken ownership there. Right. That's not going to change, I don't think. That's right. So what we're talking about here is, does Putin stop where he is now and then take his troops home and call it a day? Or what? what's the end game he could do if he doesn't do that? Right. Well, you've had mixed messages, right? You've had Putin saying, look, we don't have further designs. We don't want the breakup of the Ukraine. At the same time, they've had troop mobilization on the border. They've pulled some of those back. Um, you know, so it's not clear what the Russian endgame really is. Most experts assume that the Russian endgame is influence over what happens in the Ukraine. And for that to happen, you have to create a, a sense that the Russians could move in if they wanted to. Uh, there's also a sense that Russia may not want to hive off the eastern and southern parts of the Ukraine, in part because those are Russian-leaning, sympathetic uh, elements of the Ukraine that actually give Russia influence in the future over Ukraine's polity and, and policy. Um, and so the question of what happens next is really uh, sort of in, in the mind's eye of most of the diplomats who are involved. It's not yet clear, but clearly what the West is trying to do, the U.S. in particular, is to try to send a message to Russia that any further incursions, any further land grabs will bring with them real costs, additional sanctions. You heard this from President Obama. Um, and that's why you've seen a bit of a, a, a suspension of further sanctions, because they want to let the diplomacy play itself out and see if the tensions can, can be diminished. So as all of this is playing out, the real question going forward is, what happens to the government in Kiev? Which way does it tend to look? Is it looking to the west? Is it looking to the east? Who's got the big hammer there? Right, and I think uh, that's still part of the tug of war. It was part of the tug of war to start the crisis, and it remains part of the tug of war. There's no question, though, that the current government in Kiev, as it sets up and prepares for elections, is trying to face westward, is trying to sign agreements with the European Union that signal they're going to face west. The challenge, though, is diplomatically, does Russia exact a pound of flesh here, not in land, but in terms of influence and commitment that Kiev no, not be a part of the European Union and not in the future be a part of NATO? And that may ultimately be what Russia demands for uh, either some resolution of the Crimea situation or assurances that they're not going to take future action. But it's clear that Russia wants influence over which way Kiev faces and they want Kiev not to be uh, sucked into the Western institutions and, uh, and economic orbit. And as we wrap this up, is there any chance, do you think there's any potential outcome that has uh, Ukraine being partitioned, where the eastern part of the country is carved off yeah. and just rejoins the Russian Federation? I don't, I don't see that unless you have Russian military maneuvers in. I, I, I don't see that as part of some new political uh, discussion or resolution, in part because the government in Kiev uh, needs to defend itself. They've come under great scrutiny and criticism for not having defended their territory in Crimea. If there was some sort of uh, diplomatic solution that carved up the country further, it would not only uh, undermine the credibility of the government in Kiev, it would also undo the principles that the West has talked about, which is a, an undivided, uh, unified, sovereign Ukraine. If you start to partition it out, uh, it starts to create a very bad precedent and doesn't help uh, what happens in Kiev. Well, this is a crisis that still is unfolding, and we'll see how it winds down. It's still with us. We've got to watch it. All right, Juan, thanks very much. Thanks, Bob. And thanks to you for watching Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. We will see you next time.